We know how songs are charted for Funky Friday. We know how animations are made for Funky Friday. But what about map backgrounds? The third part of the trilogy is here tonight and we're gonna find out exactly how Funky Friday creates their map backgrounds for all of us to enjoy. So make sure you smack that like so more people know about the process that goes behind the map backgrounds. Don't forget to subscribe as well or Slappy Mouse is gonna do his funny laugh. We better get going before he does that actually. So yeah, we are on call today with the Magical Vern. They are one of the map background creators for Funky Friday and is responsible for many of the popular backgrounds that you guys like to use. How are you doing today, Vern? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be here. So what inspired you to get into background creation? Pretty funny story. I was browsing on dev forums and then just now I got access to one of the talent hubs that some developers got back then. And I was searching around and saw that a Java was actually hiring some background creators. And I wanted to try it out and I managed to get in. And that's how I've been making all these maps now. Oh nice, so it was like um, a system where you could apply to join the team or something like that? Yeah, it was a system. So how long have you been doing background creation for? It actually just started as soon as Java invited me into it. So you're relatively new to map backgrounds? Well, I... Well, to map backgrounds, yes. To building, not really. I've been doing building for five years now. Five years, wow. So what were you building before Funky Friday? So usually I'd either make my own projects or get involved in them. That's pretty much what I do. So buy commissions usually? I usually didn't do commissions. I don't like doing them unless I have to. When did you start for Funky Friday? Is there like a date where you joined the team? Right when I got the DM from Java, that's when I joined the team. As soon as that Cappy map was made, that's pretty much when I got invited. Was the Cappy map your first project for Funky Friday? Yes, and it was the most difficult one. Oh, how come it was difficult? Well, first, there was so much... There was, there was requirements on how the maps had to look like. The first issue was that you used to be able to clip out the map, so I had to remake it so you wouldn't get it clipped out. And then there was another issue where you get stuck on some of the ceiling, so I had to remake it again. And after that, the bugs didn't come out, so I just kept making more and more maps. Yeah, I noticed that like the roof, the people are able to like, jump on top of the speaker and like glitch out of the map. I remember that. When you're making your maps, I do realize that majority of the map is 3D, but you also like to put in some 2D like characters and stuff like that too. Is that, are that like images or how does that work? That was actually my first time trying out that type of style. What I wanted to do is I wanted to replicate Funky Friday style in terms of it being cartoonish and. 2D. So I first lay out the map with 3D and then I go into paint.net and draw all everything else. Oh, okay. So paint.net is what you use for the 2D models? Yeah, it's a lot easier for me to use it. What do you use exactly to model your maps? Do you primarily use Roblox Studio or do you use Blender? So mainly all the maps I've made, majority of them use bl uh, no, not Blender, Studio. Some of them do use Blender, which was the recital map, the curtains, they use Blender, and some other ones. So, is it easy for you to use Roblox Studio, or is it easier to use Blender? Oh, it's oh, it's a lot easier for me to use Studio. I've been using it for so long. When I first got into Blender, it was, oh, I had to learn from my friend. But after that, I learned my, uh, with myself, and I still don't know Blender. Still really bad at it, but I couldn't make something. Yeah, Blender's insane, dude. I've used it before. It's really difficult, but you just gotta learn, you know. Just gotta keep practicing. Yeah, it's like muscle memory afterwards. Yeah. So, how do you create backgrounds for Funky Friday from start to finish? This is gonna be the big question right here. What happens first is I'm asked for the mod. Uh, obviously, I get the mod. I get reference images from the mod, which is why some people sometimes found leaks of me using images from the mod, the, the Doki one. So I use mainly that as my reference. And then I use the stage that I was given and I block out the entire area 
and then afterwards I just start adding the outline and then the detail comes in afterwards. Okay, so how long does it take to create a normal background would you say? Well, usually it takes around one or two days. The longest one was probably something I can't name because it's still coming into the game. But it took around four or five days to fully make. Dang, that's a while. It takes a good amount of while in order to create yeah. them. But then again, you gotta make sure that the backgrounds look as perfect as possible too. I'd say that the fastest map was most likely the Etelid one and the Cyber Sensation one. The Etelid one looks pretty simple to create, right? Actually, the Troll one, I think like 30 minutes to make. 30 minutes? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it didn't take that long to, at all. You said the most difficult and the most stressful background was the Cappy one. How come it was uh, so difficult? Was it because it was the first one? The most hardest one to make was... It was probably either the Doki one, the new one, or the recital one as well. Yeah, the recital one did have a lot of uh, assets in them, especially when it comes to the 2D parts. Yeah, the recital one, I mainly went off by my head and the, the, the doki one i tried making it as close as possible but then i realized that i have to add other details that people don't see in the actual mod so i had to i, I tried to make the doki one as detailed as possible awesome yeah yeah i think you did a great job with it i know that you like to put a lot of secrets and cameos into your backgrounds like what influenced that oh it mainly influenced the uh, right after cappy Java told me that I'm allowed to add secrets, so that's when I started adding in all the the funnies. All the funnies, including the Morse code too. We're still trying to figure that one out. The Morse code, yeah. You have any tips or any hints at the Morse code so far? Oh, I I don't know myself. I forgot what the Morse code means. Oh no! Looks like we're gonna try harder then. Yeah. So, what was your most proud background that you've created for Funky Friday so far? I'd honestly say the Doki one. That one looks really clean. So, is there any tips that you'd like to share to those who want to learn how to create maps and backgrounds as well? You don't need much to create uh, a background. You just find whatever mod you like. You take some references from the mod, outline everything, add in all the details, try making it as close as possible to the mod, and then put your own style into it like my style is adding in the 2d decals afterwards but you could do whatever you want any tips on how to make the maps less laggy like how do you optimize the maps that don't use too many parts this i know one of the contributors that that one map who he was there's quite quite a bit of parts but mainly what I'd say is you can keep the detail in but try making the amount of parts as less as possible. You can use unions. Unions aren't as bad as you think. But use them whenever you have to. Don't use them everywhere. Yeah, that makes sense. Just try to keep everything nice and simple. You don't have to overcomplicate things. Alright, awesome. Well, I definitely want to thank you, thank you for your time on the interview today, Vern. Yeah, thank you too. I'm glad. I was glad to be here. It's... What an honor, actually.